me metieron otra vez a otro cuarto oscuro sola. Era un como, como una segregación donde castigan a las personas, pelean por lo que sea. Me metieron en esa, en esa caja. ¿Desde el primer día? Uh, in April this year, the National Immigrant uh, Justice Center filed a complaint with your office for civil rights and civil liberties alleging serious mistreatment of 13 gay and transgender detainees, uh, alleging uh, sexual assault by guards and fellow detainees, denial of medical care, use of long-term solitary uh, confinement. There, there are so many problems with the immigration detention system, it's, you know, it's sort of hard to know where to start. Immigration Equality is the only national organization that works uh, exclusively on LGBT immigration issues. One of the policy issues that, Im that Immigration Equality has been really focusing on for the last two plus years is how ICE houses transgender detainees. They're very vulnerable. They're very vulnerable to sexual assault. They're very vulnerable, um, you know, generally they're, they're placed with other populations. Sometimes they're placed with criminal populations. Sometimes they're actually placed with sex offenders. Um, so th they're already vulnerable from the general population. And they're, you know, a lot of times they're with people who just don't understand what it means to be trans. A lot of them have had gender confirming surgeries, breast augmentation for women. You know, there's a, there's a, that they are women or they are, a trans woman is a woman, and if you put that person in a population with all men, it's just a recipe, a recipe for disaster. So DHS, in an attempt to make it safe for the trans person, will often pull them out of the general population and isolate them. The problem with that is administrative segregation generally means that the person is locked up for 23 hours a day. It, can, it means that they, they go through great psychological harm, they don't get to socialize with other detainees, it can be much more difficult for them to have uh, visits with family, friends, or, or even with counsel. Me llamo Norma Ureiro, soy mexicana. Y tengo aproximadamente 11 años viviendo aquí en los Estados Unidos. Yo desde los 6 años uh, ya sentía atracción femenina, me sentía mujercita, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Empezaba a ponerme ropa de mujer, zapatos de mujer. Al principio yo creo que lo veía como un chiste, como algo pasajero, pero conforme fue pasando el tiempo, Eh, se me iba notando un poquito más, eh, eh, tenía más, este, más orientación hacia los niños, me gustaban los niños, me gustaba juntarme con, con las niñas, jugar muñecas y todo eso, mm -hmm. entonces ahí la gente empezó a darse cuenta, principalmente más mis padres y mm -hmm. mis hermanos. Occasionally we have clients who have really strong family ties who are lucky enough to be born into a pretty progressive family, a very accepting family. For someone who is less lucky, who's born into you know, a family that does not accept their uh, gender identity or sexual orientation, they're really on their own. I think particularly for our clients who come from very repressive environments, very conservative, very often religious environments, it's very common that a transgender person is disowned by their family. A los 12, 13 años, yo me identificaba ser una mujer, o sea, pero siempre viví con ese miedo. Siempre, siempre viví con el miedo porque recuerdo que cuando yo iba a la escuela, los niños me gritaban que yo era maricón y siempre llegaban a acusarme con mis padres y me golpeaban. Sí. ¿Y alguien te ayudaba? Está bien. Traté de, de buscar ayuda, pero 
siempre recibí ese rechazo, no podía decirle a nadie. Escapaba yo de mi casa porque tenía miedo de regresar a mi casa para, porque me iban a golpear. Incluso mi, mi mamá me amarraba con, con una cuerda para que no, no saliera de la casa. O sea, ellos me querían corregir de esa manera, golpeándome. No hay derechos humanos allá, no nos escuchan. No, aunque uno vaya, no nos toman en cuenta. Somos unos bichos raros para ellos. Para ellos no existimos. Me encerraron en un, en un lugar solitario, me sentí muy mal. Era un cuarto muy frío y oscuro. Solamente una cama, una colchoneta, eh, que, que nos encierran 24 horas, casi 23 horas laqueada. Como que si nosotros fuéramos unas criminales. Incluso yo le dije, le dije a la oficial, una oficial, que yo necesitaba un sostén. Y me dijo, es que esta no es una cárcel de mujeres. A, a veces se les olvidaba, era, era muy rara la vez que, que ellos me sacaban a, a, a tomar aire solamente. También eh, la mente de uno tiene que distraerse. Al contrario, yo ahí me estaba volviendo loca. Me estaba volviendo loca. From what we've seen, it, other than housing transgender detainees, primarily administrative segregation is used for people who have violated prison or detention facility rules. So if someone you know, punches a guard or something, they end up in administrative segregation. So that same sort of punitive system is what's being used to you know, quote unquote protect transgender detainees. You know, some of the worst harms that we see come from the guards themselves. The list of, of terrible things is, just goes on and on. De ahí me, me trasladaron para Luciana. Yo sin, sin comunicarme con nadie, sin amistades, perdí contacto con mi prima. No sabía nada, nada de mí. Ella estaba preocupada por mí. La misma rutina de, On Monday, the four began refusing to eat meals until they are moved out of solitary confinement and onto death row, where they say they'll get better treatment. People experience solitary confinement as even more damaging than physical torture. Tengo esos sueños. A veces siento que oigo las rejas cerrarse, las puertas. Cuando fui a ver el juez, el primer juez me pidió cinco mil dólares de fianza. ¿A quién se los pido? No puedo comunicarme con nadie. Me dio una hoja, una hoja donde él me dijo que me iban a poder ayudar. Pero cómo me comunico estando en una caja, en una celda de castigo, donde no podía usar el teléfono, no tenía acceso a ninguna llamada. People who are in immigration detention are in civil detention, which ironically has the effect of giving them fewer rights than people who are criminal detainees. So if you are in the criminal justice system um, and you've been accused of committing a crime, you have the right to an attorney. You can't be held without charges. 
Um, whereas if you are in the civil immigration detention system, you have no right to an attorney. The stripping away of liberty, of your ability even to live in the United States, is a huge detriment. It is at least as problematic as putting someone in prison, right? So if the stakes are so high, how can you expect a person to go on their own to prove their case without a lawyer? Like, it's a proper trial. There's a judge. The Department of Homeland Security has a lawyer to prove that you should be deported. But if you barely speak any English, you know, you're already a member of a very vulnerable population. It's, it's hard to even imagine how a trans person can come up with the, the resources to do that by themselves. Unfortunately, you know, some of the most vulnerable populations in the world are transgender people. You know, sadly, her, her case isn't isolated there. Trans women are, are regularly abused. Aquí en Estados Unidos fue otro mundo para mí, otro, no sé, algo bien diferente. Sentí la diferencia, a sentirme más libre, sí. Ay, lo que me gusta hacer es dar show, sí. Aprender inglés, darle más ánimo a, la, a nuevas generaciones. Ya tengo una familia aquí. Aparte de mi familia real, como mis padres, mis hermanos, yo, ellas son como mi familia porque me identifico con ellas, son como yo. Nos hablamos de ella, nos entendemos. Hablamos como una conversación normal de mujeres, auténticamente. <risa> You know, it really hits home that being transgender or being gay or lesbian is a fundamental part of who you are. For people to go through such a rigorous, you know, traumatic process to just be their true self is kind of amazing. I think that if ICE can't find a way to safely house transgender people, then it shouldn't detain them. There are alternatives to detention which they could use, um, and they could use more broadly, and we think they should for, for all vulnerable populations, but particularly transgender people. If you compared the cost of detaining a person all day, every day, for being responsible for their meals, their clothing, for being responsible for their medical care, or buying an ankle bracelet, it seems like that would be a good trade-off. But ankle bracelets aside, the best remedy is to release someone under their own recognizance. You can have as many reporting requirements as you have, you can have them check in weekly with a deportation officer. You know, when you're talking about someone who has a viable claim to stay in the United States, whether it's asylum or something else, they're not a flight risk. They don't want to leave. They're so willing and interested in regularizing their immigration status that they want to participate in the legal system.